There were so many groups and excellent people at that Xerox lab that it took me a long time to decide what I really wanted to concentrate on when I returned. But after about six or seven months, it became clear to me that I had to have such a personal computer like they had developed with the Alto. I couldn't possibly go back to Switzerland and work through a very thin line with that huge monster in the cellar. No interaction, practically. And, uh, well, well what, what do you do? I mean, these, these Altos weren't on sale. They, they couldn't be bought anywhere. Xerox had developed them for the research lab, period. Uh, and like with, uh, like with the compiler, what do you do in that case? Build it yourself. If you're an engineer, you can do it. And uh, I was then fortunate to get in touch with an assistant professor of Utah who was teaching hardware development, relatively simple things. And he wanted, he, he called me and wanted to know whether it would be possible to come to Switzerland for a PhD in software. He would like to know to learn about software. And I thought for a while, I said, well, and we want to learn about hardware. Might be a good exchange. And he actually came with his family for three years. Uh, and the result was the Lilith computer, modeled after the Alto, with already a bit more modern technology. But Lilith's computer was mostly for teaching purposes, right? Or you had Not, more ambitious plans? Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, we, we built 20 of them. And 10 of them were put into a student lab. But the 10 others were in our institute for the researchers. Not only in my group, also in our centers group for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was such, it, it was not just a PC toy. It was the first time I saw such a personal computer with which you could solve real problems, including building a compiler for it. They had large enough memories, enough speed. You could really work. Yeah, but your approach to the Lewis project was somewhat in the opposite direction that was at the time because you had chosen, okay, one user, it's okay, but one language, one operating system, one compiler. So, which means that it was, again, okay, I understand that it was for the purpose of doability, right? Of doability, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I had uh, Richard Orad, myself, and two or three graduate students, and we were up to building a whole computer and software for it, whereas companies employed armies to do <laughs> such a thing. And the only solution was to confine yourself to modest goals, <clears throat> such as one language, one user. Yeah. And what language was it? It was not Pascal. That was Modula. Multithread? And Modula is kind of a successor to Pascal, more extended for system design, system programming. And maybe I should say again, in, at my sabbatical at Xerox, I got to know the language MESA. That's their company internal research tool. Again, not available outside. And it was very much built on top of Pascal, much bigger. And so my obvious Solution was to take Mesa as, a, as an example and reduce it again. <laughs> and this is how Modular came modular. up. With the, with the idea of modules and separate compilation. 